All right, so the first thing that we're going to compare between these two massive submarines is going to be their size. It's going to be, you know, one of their most striking and defining features. So I got these submarines lined up as evenly as I could do it. But you can see that the Beluga submarine is most definitely a lot longer than the SEAL submarine, but they're both... I mentioned this in the video when I first covered the Beluga. Both these submarines are big in their own ways. They're like bigger than each other in different ways. So the Beluga, as we can see, is definitely longer and a lot skinnier than the SEAL submarine. But the SEAL submarine is a lot thicker, I would say. You know, it's a lot wider and has a more rounded appearance. Where the Beluga submarine is kind of just... it had The Beluga submarine has more of like a slim and slick appearance. Where the SEAL submarine has more of like a tanky and thicker appearance. So the Beluga is longer, but the SEAL submarine is a bit wider. We can also see that difference in the engines as well of both these submarines. So if we look at the SEAL submarine, we have these two fat engines. I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> we have these two giant engines on the right and left hand side they're both pretty pretty decent size you know pretty powerful engines they look like they almost look like jet engines so we got those we got those two on the seal submarine and then we've come over to the beluga we have a giant one big old engine in the back kind of looks like a big old fan and then we have the two smaller engines on the left and right hand side of the submarine that sort of resemble the cyclops the cyclops's engines i would also like to clarify i am only comparing these two submarines like just comparing them that's literally it there's no like anything else behind it there's not like um this submarine is better than the other submarine this one looks better i like both of these submarines quite equally to be honest because they're both massive and i really enjoy the massive submarines in this game so i just want to point that out in case somebody's like thinking i'm saying that one submarine is better than the other so i think they're both amazing submarines at the end of the day nothing competitive or anything like that so we can see that both of these submarines both have hatches on the top so the seal submarine has a hatch right here that you can enter the enter what did i just say you can enter the top from and then on the beluga submarine there's also a hatch right here a little towards the back that you can enter from the top however with the beluga submarine there is a hatch on the bottom as well right here there's a hatch right here on the bottom of the beluga submarine that you can enter it from whereas the seal does not have that but it only has the only two ways you can enter the seal is from the top hatch on the very top of the submarine and you can also enter it from the back where the vehicle docking bay is another thing about the exterior of the submarine that is also different is going to be the docking and the vehicles that you can put inside these submarines so with the beluga submarine there are two docking bays for your vehicles we have one on the front and it's a little bit wider that's because the one on the front of the submarine is used for the seamoth and the seamoth only and then the one on the back is a little bit thinner and as you can imagine this one is used for the prawn suit so you can actually have two vehicles docked in the beluga submarine at the same time which is you know super convenient now if we go over to the seal submarine we can head over to the back and we can see that there is a docking area right here. Now you can dock your Seamoth here and you can also dock your prawn suit here, but you can only dock, you know, one vehicle at a time, obviously, because there's not enough space in here. The trade-off here is that you can dock two different vehicles in the same little docking bay, whereas the Beluga submarine, you can only dock one type of vehicle in each of their respective bays. The detail on both of these submarines exterior is also immaculate, I would have to say, because the exterior of these submarines just looks freaking awesome. Got the side of the Beluga submarine with all the different patterns and the blue, you know, sort of like Altera themed type of submarine. Since the submarine is technically made by Altera, you know, it makes sense that it has the Altera type of color scheme with the orange orange lines, and then we have the blue and white colors all around the submarine. And then if we go over to the SEAL submarine, there's also a great level of detail. The case is a bit different with the SEAL submarine because the colors do not scream like Altera to me. The only thing that we have that maybe resembles a little bit of Altera is these little orange lines right here, and then the blue and white pattern. The colors we see primarily on this submarine are white, and we can also see that it has some fins you know some extra added detail on the side because these fins are on the right and left hand side of the submarine on the engines there's some extra detail as we can see it also says danger and jet intake on the top of this wheel engine right here and i think it also yeah it also sets it on the bottom and this little detail is also on the beluga submarine because if we go to the top of this submarine over here we can see it says sci vessel probably means science vessel well i hope that says sci it looks like an eye i'm not sure it does look cool i like the font that they used as well it looks pretty nice back to the seal submarine we have these giant engines on the left and right hand side of the submarine also have their own little fins 
on their sides. Again, danger jet blast. This time, it doesn't say jet intake. When we come around the back, we can see that there's a little black dot up there or black circle sphere, whatever you want to call it. I'm pretty sure that's the camera, the rear camera for the SEAL submarine. So that's a nice little detail. We got the little lights right there. The engines have those nice blue stripes around them. That's also pretty awesome. And also we have these white stripes or white lines, whatever you want to call them, that sort of streak around the entire submarine, which gives it a nice little added level of texture and detail to the outside of the submarine. All right, with the exterior of both these submarines now covered, we can head on to the inside of both of these submarines. All right, so heading on to the interior of the Atlas slash Beluga submarine, the entire submarine is very well lit when you turn the lights on because there's lights all over the ceiling that you can see and in some cases on the floor that you're walking on. But the area that I'm in right now is the, I entered through the bottom of the submarine and we're just in like the lower deck area. You can build in both of these submarines. That's an amazing feature to have. And we can see that this is a bit of the like power source room, I guess you can say, because all four of these are power cells. So this thing runs off of, what is this, four, eight, 12, 16. So this thing runs off of 16 power cells, which is quite hefty, I would say. And these little power cells right here, were actually, you can actually see them on the outside right here because you can see there's two on the left hand side and two on the right hand side and i believe concept art for the atlas these were supposed to be um escape pods instead of like these little power cell things but i'm sure that whole process probably would have been like way too complicated to actually implement into the game so the devs for this mod probably just opted in for doing the power cells instead which is honestly a pretty good like substitution you know because at the very least they didn't leave this spot blank or anything they actually filled it up with something and actually made it look good and make sense so I like that. All right, so now that we've seen where the Beluga stores its power cells, we're gonna now move on to the actual engine room itself. So this room is sort of like in the very back of the submarine on the upper deck. So we come all the way back here and it's got a nice little uh, texture on the floor sort of indicating that, you know, this is a more industrial isk room, you know, giving it that nice engine room type vibe. And then we have the big old engine right here. Sort of looks like an Iron Man core, if I'm gonna be completely honest with you. But the cool thing about this engine, this engine model is that it actually moves and spins around whenever you turn the engine on. So I'm actually gonna show that to you right now. And now that I turn the engine on, we can now see that the engine is now running and it is spinning quite fast. I'm not entirely, can't walk into it. Okay, good. And we can also see behind it that there are some little like electrical things sort of like holding it together. Either that, either they're holding it together or maybe like they're drawing power or something. I guess we can speculate what these little electric things do in the background. So that's all pretty nice attention to detail and whatnot. I really do like that. All right, now moving on to the SEAL submarine's engine room and power cell storage. The SEAL submarine stores its power cells in the same room as the engine room. It's not separated like it is in the Beluga. So we can see that the SEAL runs off of one, two, three, four, five. So the SEAL submarine runs off of 10 power cells. The Beluga runs off of 16, so that's a big difference. And we can also see another big difference in this engine room and the way everything looks. The Beluga submarine had a smaller, had a smaller area. This is what I was talking about as far as like the length versus the width of this submarine goes. So we already know where the power cells for the SEAL submarine go, and we can see that they're sort of attached to these engines. I'm assuming these are like engines or like reactors or whatever, and there's two of them here. And then we have all these big old pipes all over the place. It really gives off a engine room feeling slash vibe, you know, and the floor also matches. So both these submarines have amazing looking engine rooms. So when looking at the general areas for both of these submarines, we're gonna start with the Beluga. So the Beluga has a lot of space on the upper deck to actually build. You got this whole area right here that's free. You can also build around your different vehicles, like the prawn suit has some area that you can build in over here. And then the Seamoth also has some nice area you can build over here. You can build in the lower deck if you want to, where the power cells are. And then if you go to the middle of the submarine, there's another lower deck right here. And we can see it's a nice little cargo room almost. It looks, it really looks like a, um, like you know how the uh, the luggage area looks whenever you're on a airplane? That's sort of like the vibes I'm getting right here. If you go to the middle of the submarine and you look up, there's gonna be a hatch right here that you can go up. And it's a nice little room where you can make this, you can make this a ton of different things. You can make this like your personal study room. You can make it your bedroom, etc. All right, so in the SEAL submarine, we're gonna have a lot more verticality when it comes to building in here, because again, the submarine's a lot um, wider and taller. So we can see we're in the area where you enter from the top hatch right here. You come down again, a uh, little drain, you know, cause you're gonna come down, you're gonna be wet, obviously. So the water drains out right there. You can build in this area. We got some nice windows right here leading into the next room. And another neat detail about the SEAL submarine are the doors because they actually added sliding doors to the submarine that actually open whenever you walk up to them, as we can see right here. 
that's a nice little detail to walk through here we have sort of like a lounge area again plenty of room in both of these submarines to make yourself a nice decent sized mobile base so we got this big old area down here that you can build and we got a light right there and then if we come up here we can see that there's some nice detail attention to detail with the glass railing right here we go up here and then we have another area that we can build a bunch of stuff. When I built my sail submarine, I put a garden up here. It looked pretty awesome. And that about covers the general area for both of these submarines. And with that, we can move on to the last part of both of these, which is going to be the bridge. And we're gonna start at the Beluga again. Now looking at the bridge of the Beluga submarine, we're gonna start here. So we can see that there's some nice railing right here to keep us from falling right over into the glass. And speaking of glass, that's one of the main highlights of this bridge. So we can see a lot from this submarine, both while we're standing up here and if we're on the lower deck, there's also some glass that we can see through down there. So a nice visibility all throughout the submarine. We get a little panel over here that shows us, you know, you turn the engine on right here. We got speed one, speed two, speed three. This is supposed to be a shield, although it's invisible for some odd reason, I'm not sure why. But yeah, whenever you turn the shield on, it makes the whole submarine blue, it looks pretty awesome. And then this is the agility mode, which I'm gonna show you because I forgot to show it when I first showcased this mod. So do my due diligence this time and actually show you the agility mode. We got a nice little hologram of the Atlas slash Beluga submarine over here. We can turn on the interior lights, turn them on and off. And then we have the exterior lights right here. All in all, a pretty nice looking and detailed bridge. So if we go into the SEAL submarine bridge and we look to the right, the first thing we're gonna see is this big old scanner room right here because the SEAL submarine has its own built-in scanner room, which is super awesome. And it also has this little area right here. Again, the glass railing attention to detail, go up these stairs and we have a little area up here that we can actually build some stuff. So if you wanna make your bedroom in the bridge, you know, you can definitely do that. And as far as visibility goes in the SEAL submarine, we can see that the glass is extremely extremely open so it's going to be really easy to see everything all around you just from simply standing here like this glass is huge you see all the way up above you can see down below left right you can see literally everything so both of these submarines have great visibility when it comes to the glass and the size of both the bridges is pretty large as well so there's plenty of room for you to build and get creative in here you can see the engine thing is going to be on the left and the camera is going to be on the right it's going to have sort of like the same interface as the cyclops so the seal submarine is definitely going to be a bit slower so we're just going to do the max speed right now and we're moving you know pretty decent speed for a submarine of this size at least it turns pretty fast it does everything that you you'd want a submarine to do it off it sort of handles like really similar to the cyclops so that's a plus and that's pretty nice as well all right so main difference here there is no interface like it is with the seal submarine and the cyclops so it's just like completely open right here no like toggle the engine or anything like that the speed of the beluga submarine is a lot faster than that of the seal submarine given it's you know how narrow this submarine is so it could probably like slice through the water a little bit faster so when you have the agility mode toggled you're not actually going to control the submarine by using your like wasd instead you're going to control it by just using w and s and then you're going to use the mouse to steer everything around which is going to give you a lot more maneuverability when it comes to the submarine it's going to make it everything a lot easier to you know navigate through all the different areas and whatnot like the way i'm going right now i would never be able to point the submarine down like this if i wasn't in the agility mode so it makes all these harder to reach and that well i'm about to get stuck it makes navigating all these super tight areas and stuff that you normally wouldn't be able to operate a lot easier because you actually have a lot more control over the submarine through the agility mode are we stuck on something what's going on up there but other than that i think that's about all i wanted to compare when it came to the beluga slash atlas submarine and the seal submarine both super awesome submarines as far as their looks go both incredibly detailed but yeah other than that that is about all i had for y'all thank y'all for watching i hope you enjoyed and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.